Good morning, folks. Time to wake up quickly. Today we've got about the 20th lunar transit of the SDO satellite in our tenure here on YouTube. A massive comet is diving towards the sun right now, and we've got news from out of this world to beneath our feet, and the weather gets wilder every day. We're seeing a large plasma filament structure coming over the eastern limb on the equator, which could pose eruption threats over the coming days. But enough of what's to come. Let's go to spaceweathernews.com and find the last day on our star cannot be viewed with the STO satellite because it began lagging at the onset of the latest lunar transit yesterday morning. The moon does this on schedule every couple of weeks to months. This is exactly what it looks like, and an FYI on the color you might see on the moon, it's a combination of the moon's very thin atmosphere, the ions blasted away by the solar wind, and the SDO burn-in background. Luckily, the solar x-ray images from GOES were operational during the duration. No eruptions, flares, or other ejecta since the lag began, but when I came to SOHO to confirm that no CMEs had taken place, I realized the satellite lags may be because all systems are sending commands to pull these images first. A huge comet is racing towards the sun right now, and its coma is already bigger than the planet Earth. Eyes on this one as it approaches today. Solar flaring? Geez, feel like I walked in on him in the shower. Sunspots are not producing, but... The solar wind is. I think the best explanation for this multi-shock stream that lacks major speed is that the CME cloud we were expecting had multiple components as multiple filaments did rip away. Not sure if the coronal hole stream is even hit yet, and that's an iffy proposition with global magnetic storms already in place and strong disruptions over Europe. Another stream could be a bigger situation. But as you know, the ground should be active as well with that coronal hole facing Earth, and a volcano has once again stole the show. This one in Chile gave one skier the memory of a lifetime. Let's go way out of this world and find one of the first potential examples of radio outburst activity on a star controlled by one of its orbiting planets. Coming back to our solar system where studies suggest Venus may have been habitable back when Mars was, and perhaps much earlier. Japan, a bit skittish after a false quake alarm triggers wide-scale panic. I've got a chuckle because they think lightning hit the seismic detection device, which is kind of what the earthquake breaks down like anyway. I assure you there are people in China with bigger problems than flash flooding from Typhoon Nita at Hong Kong. This is a few hundred miles to the north. Major hail and storms from Malaysia to India where travel is strongly affected as well as agriculture. And in India specifically, they have had another of their deadly rounds of ultra-frequent lightning to the tune of tens of thousands per cloud outburst multiple times over a couple days. Belize and the Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico should be able to see this beast tracking in towards them now. Prayers for the locals to be affected there and also for this guy. The jumpiness is because YouTube has deemed this video unfit for our consumption as it's likely this guy is no longer with us. If you click point by point, however, you can get a number of still images and even a couple quarter second plays. This is allegedly from a few days ago in Yemen, back when the storms we saw hit Malaysia and India were about a thousand miles west. The end of the video is not shown and there is no information on the outcome of that situation. Folks, if you're looking for the conference page, you can get there by clicking that button over at suspiciousobservers.org. We'd love to see you out in Albuquerque. We got you guys a deeper look episode yesterday on planetary situations coming at the end of the month. And of course, your membership allows these news to come out free each morning and keeps the progress coming. Not as much progress as we'd like out of the USGS on the challenge. Head over to spaceweathernews.com slash challenge if you haven't seen the update there. We've got your pressure and radar forecast for today across the world, followed by what shots of our star are possible with the data lag. Sun diving comet, solar wind, and storms. Oh my, it's 4.05 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.